Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, firstly, Albert, yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity today and congratulations on the, on the book. Um, if you will allow me, I would just, yeah, uh, as you were speaking, I made a few notes. Uh, certain, a few things came to mind, uh, which I thought I could maybe elucidate. Uh, the first thing that struck me, in terms of your description of a psychopath, is the I, your description seems to be the clinical version of the psychopath. And here I'd like to make a distinction. Uh, in the research over the last, let's say, about 10 or 15 years, there has been a very clear development in the psychopathy research. And this is the distinction between a clinical and non-clinical versions. Uh, Albert, I think you refer to it because some people refer to them as successful and unsuccessful psychopaths. This is a distinction, but this is one of numerous distinctions for possible versions of psychopathy. Now, I would like to make, or just to elucidate this distinction, I think, Albert, in terms of your description of why we, of psychopathy and the reason that we, sh we should be aware of what's happening and we should try and identify them, and in, with particular reference to hiring them into organizations, the, the first point I think is very important here is that the description that you gave for psychopathy seems to be the stereotypical clinical version of a, psycho a psychopath, and they represent around about 1% of the population. Right, one percent of the population is a minute uh, a proportion of the population, and these individuals tend to be institutionalized already. So we tend to find them in prisons or in other uh, other psycho psychological institutions. So they tend to be, to a large extent, already removed from the population. What I think we should maybe uh, consider is that what you're referring to is actually the case of a subclinical psycho psychopath, right? Uh, the subclinical psychopath is, in terms of content, exactly the same as the clinical version. What is the difference? The difference is that the subclinical psychopaths display the same types of behaviors, emotions, thoughts, feelings, but to a lesser extent. Less intense, less frequent. All right? So that is a clear uh, qualitative difference. So I think in the way that you described psychopaths, the difference to me, to my mind, would be those people are already institutionalized. We're looking at an entirely different animal, to my mind. All right, so that's a very important thing. That's all. That also makes them uh, makes it much harder for us to identify them. All right. In terms of subclinical psychopathy, I should maybe just add. One of your recommendations that you are advancing, Albert, is the idea that we should employ more clinical assessment in organizations. Now, I'm not sure if I entirely agree with this, because the, the assessment that you're advancing here is the MMPI, which is entirely a clinical instrument. Right? That instrument is designed, and it can only identify pathology. And we are essentially wanting to apply this to a population in which there is no, no pathology. We are working on the assumption that people with clinical versions of psychopathy are already institutionalized elsewhere, in prison or in other institutions. So I think that, that makes it, again, more harder to identify these individuals, although it's extremely important. Uh, maybe I could also add to this is the idea that psychopathy is not the only destructive personality that we're interested in organizational settings. In the last... Ten years or so, uh, a major development was the idea of the dark triad of personality. And this involves multiple uh, personality dispositions, first being narcissism, second being Machiavellianism, and the third being psychopathy. And in non-clinical populations would be subclinical psychopathy. So that's maybe another point that we could discuss further. In terms of assessment, you advance the idea of clinical assessment. I also strongly support the idea of assessment or psychometric assessment within organizations, but perhaps not the clinical versions. We need different tools because they might not be best suited for this particular uh, purpose. There is some, a point that I would like to address, is, uh, Albert, is that the, the statement that psychopaths are not strategic thinkers. The recent research evidence seems to suggest exactly the opposite. In fact, they tend to flourish within organizations and a reason for this is perhaps the nature of the organization that makes it easy for people to advance within organizational settings. Um, but all, but, but uh, uh, 
I, I, I think one thing I should maybe just maybe I should use an example. Many of the those personality dispositions traits we value very highly within organizations, especially at the highest levels. What, research, what other research as well as my own has found is that as, as you move up within the organizations, we find those pr prototypical good dispositions, constructive personalities, those things that we really value, they tend to diminish as you go upwards in the organization. So the question that is being asked here, are we selecting the right people upwards or are people moving up the ranks because of those dispositions? Are we selecting them? Are they moving up because they're rewarded? Or are we selecting incorrectly? That's a very interesting question I think we might mm, discuss further. And then uh, what's the last thing that I might put on for discussion is you also refer to as psychopathy as a type of disorder. Psychopathy doesn't it does not necessarily uh, reflect a personality disorder. When you talk about antisocial personality disorder, in that case you are talking about pathology because that is a diagnosis being levied or given to someone. Uh, psychopathy, on the other hand, tends to be a more descriptive, descriptive of particular behaviors, but I think the confusion often stems from the fact that we use terms such as antisocial personality disorder along with the psychopathy interchangeably, which I think might not be the right way to go. So there is just from my side a few things that we um, might discuss further in the upcoming panel discussion. Thanks. The University of Johannesburg. Rethink. Reinvent.